Shalom. Enjoy the beautiful, peaceful view of Yah's creation, which we're about to talk about here. I hope that the connection is working well. When we say Yahusha, we are uttering Yahuwah saves. That's what is uttering out of our lips as he came in the name of the Father. And we talk so much about the Father's name, Yahuwah, but today we're going to really be focusing on the name of the Messiah, Yahusha. And the lovely thing is, is that we will be doing a baptism at the end. I hope that people can stay for the entire reading and the entire Holy Mikra, Kodesh Mikra here. Hey, Shalom, Kendall. Thanks for being here. And... Bear with me for distractions. There's probably going to be hikers coming by. And I hope that I got a big rock kind of shielding the live feed. So I'm hoping that it won't um, cause the connection to be bad. But we're just going to power right through this. And we're going to be talking about a couple different things. Number one we're going to finish up with the tabernacles and creation concept that I promised everyone that I would do. And it's not going to be real lengthy, just a short little thing. Sandy, shalom to you. Thank you. Shabbat shalom, the last great day. The Moed, the appointed times. And hard to believe we're wrapping it all up today. And couldn't be more beautiful here on Lake Winnebago. Um, but the first thing that I want to talk about is, well, I want to open with something about being in the tabernacle of the Most High, and that will involve reading Psalm 91. And here's my cheat sheet, so I got to hang on to my cheat sheet here psalm 91 and we're going to learn a very unique and cool hebrew word today psalm 91 and i'll read the whole chapter he that dwells in the secret place of el elyon shall abide under the shadow of el shaddai I will say of Yahuwah, he is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. How much have we been learning about being delivered from the pestilence and diseases of this world? He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust his truth shall be your shield and buckler. And we think of Yahusha when we mention his truth. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. That was easy to experience, a little bit of terror at nighttime out here. Nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday, a thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made Yahuwah, which is my refuge, even El Elyon, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling." And that word dwelling is, um, I want to say that that one is ohel, I'm pretty sure. Um, the Hebrew word is ohel or ohel. 
easy to remember. For he shall give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. Praise Yahuwah. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my Yeshua. So, yeah, um... That Psalm 91.10 has one of the three Hebrew words in it that we're talking about today. Uh, it's either sukkah or ohel in that one. But the three words are sukkah, which we dwell in sukkah, sukkot, plural, during for the seven days that we just completed. And then you have ohel, which is the tabernacle of assembly and then we have um mishkan mishkan which is the the tabernacle of assembly is also referred to as mishkan and from there i want to look at amos 9 11 and we're going to see one of the first instances of one of these three words that are all translated as tabernacle dwelling um tent in English and they're interchangeable in English and they're also kind of interchangeable to some degree in the Hebrew but the sukkah tabernacle is more of a thicket um, which originally would have been sort of dome-like you know I built a thicket sukkah dome structure when I was in the UK last year and it, sukkah has connotations of a temporary dwelling and like a, a for animals, just a little shelter to feed in or just a shelter for yourself if you're staying out in the wilderness is what that word sukkah is about. But the other two tabernacle words are ohel and um, mishkan. So Amos 9.11 Here's a sukkah reference. In that day will I raise up at the ta sukkah tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up at the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. Here we see a prophecy towards Yahusha HaMashiach in building up the sukkah of David. And we see how this would be messianic prophecy in nature of, as we learned, Yahusha being born in a sukkah, uh, not in a manger. We talked about how funny that would be for him to literally be born out <coughs> through the matrix right into a feeding trough. It, it makes more sense that he was born inside a sukkah covering. So here we see prophecy pointing towards sukkah, and sukkah is the least used tabernacle word. But I want to just touch on creation and the tabernacle dome that we reside underneath and how the tabernacle of um, Israel, when they built the tabernacle out in the wilderness, with the Holy of Holies and everything, that um, there's a website that shows how the dimensions were pi, 3.14, very close to the dimensions of pi, and found that actually the tabernacle was not a square rectangular box, but rather it was a dome tent tabernacle. And that dome tent tabernacle is referred to throughout the Torah as both uh, the Mishkan of assembly, the, the Moed Mishkan, I believe. And also the, it's also called the Ohel, the Ohel tabernacle of assembly. And 
I think I'll go ahead and look at Isaiah 40, 22, because I want to go ahead and talk about the, the tabernacle, the tent that we live under in this biblical cosmology creation that so many of us have woken up to. And it, you can see how the creation is the foundation of really our understanding of everything. Um, it's a huge steal and lie that the devil has accomplished, and people think it doesn't matter, but it also messes up our, it takes away our appreciation and understanding of the, this, the festival of Sukkot and dwelling in tabernacles and the way that Yahusha making his tabernacle with men and being born in that sukkah, um, that it celebrates him really being in the greater tabernacle that he walked underneath of this earth, actually visiting this earth in human form and dwelling in the greater tabernacle dome firmament of creation. So Isaiah 40, 22, it says, it is he that sits upon the circle of the earth. Now, a lot of people, you got to stop right there with them. You got to say, is circle of the earth literal? And they'll want to believe that it is. They'll want to believe the circle of the earth is referring to the spherical globe earth. Well, then further on in this verse, it also has to be literal. And we have to make it all literal. It says, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. Now there it it is using as, so we're, it is simile here. We're using simile that stretches out the heavens as a curtain, as a covering. A curtain is a covering. The heavens are a covering and spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. And that word tent is the word, oh hell, oh hell. It's kind of funny, easy to remember, oh hell, tent. Um, so the heaven is described as this oh hell tent and recent discoveries by hebrew theologian and uh actually not so much a theologian but an engineer and an expert in hebrew decided to look at the tabernacle and he and he's not even a flat earth dome creationist he just found this not looking for anything he just wanted to understand the tabernacle better and what it may have been like. And he came to the conclusion that it was actually a dome tent. And it is referred to the Hebrew word, same as what Isaiah refers to the tent of heaven that we live under. It's called the Ohel tent in Hebrew. And that's going to be in Deuteronomy 31, 14 to 15. But not only in this one place, all throughout the Torah, it's the tabernacle where they worshipped that Yahuwah dwelt inside in a cloud was referred to as one of two tabernacle words, Mishkan, which I believe Mishkan has connotations of a uh, dwelling. And I think Ohel is really the word that really means a tent. That, that's my understanding. I'm not entirely certain, but Mishkan is more dwelling and um dwelling or assembling place and oh hell is more of the word tent in English but Deuteronomy 31 14 and 15 and Yahweh said unto Moshe behold your days approach that you must die call at Yahusha and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the assembly the tabernacle oh hell of the Moed that I may give him a charge. And Moshe and Yahusha went and presented themselves in the Ohel tabernacle of the assembly. And Yahuwah appeared in the Ohel tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud. And the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle, the Ohel tabernacle. 
Here in these two verses, we see this O hell tabernacle, same as what Isaiah refers to heaven to being like an O hell tent. And don't you think inspired scriptures would tell us, hey, heaven is a tent, you know? Heaven is, that's, it's a dome. It's, it's like a tent, O oh hell. It wouldn't use that word if it had nothing, no, nothing similar, if it was just ever expanding nothingness, a vacuum of outer space. That doesn't make sense. It's not tent-like then. And the circle of the earth, of course, can be no other than a flat disk that that oh hell tent is stretched over abroad so and we see in exodus 26 if if you study on your own time exodus 26 is again it's called the oh hell assembly tabernacle but it's also called the mishkan tabernacle in exodus and and that's where you'll find the um uh believe it's 30 cubits for each curtain and add it all up times um, 10 curtains was 300 and then one curtain was folded in half what got you to plus 15 now it's 315 cubits and the little bit of overlap leaves you about 314 cubits that it makes much more sense to think of the tabernacle as this circular dome and we know and understand because remember Moses was seeing a pattern of something a pattern of something and Isaiah also says it is he who sits above the circle of the earth so he's literally dwelling above at the top of this tabernacle that we live under at the top the north pole um and this is the same thing and pattern that Moses was being shown, this pattern of the tabernacle in the mount. And what would happen is we're going to see that the glory of Yahuwah would go over top of that tabernacle, O hell tent, as a cloud by day and as a pillar of fire by night. And so we see this pattern that we're trying to be shown a pattern uh, that's so incredibly important. If that's, he's like, I want to show you this. I want you to see this tabernacle and never forget that I dwell above you. And I'm going to do a version of that for you here inside your whole earth tabernacle. Um, so let's look at... Exodus 40, 34 to 38. And really, I would, I know some of these I have right. I'm, I'm thinking this whole section is going to be the Hebrew word ohel uh, and not mishkan. So it, it's the same word of the, the firmament is like an ohel tent. Exodus 40, 34. Then a cloud covered at the tent, the ohel of the assembly, and the glory of Yahuwah filled at the tabernacle, and Moshe was not able to enter into the ohel tent of the assembly, because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of Yahuwah filled at the ohel tent tabernacle. Here it has... Um, tent and tabernacle i think it might be going back and forth because one of them is the mishkan and the other one is the ohel if i remember correctly um and when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle the children of yasharel went onward in all their journeys so when the when the cloud went up and it was above the tabernacle and it went up it was telling them to journey but if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of Yahuwah was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night. In the sight of all the house of Yasharel throughout all their journeys, 
are we starting to really put this together, the understanding of how his presence being above that dome tabernacle, not a rectangle, but a dome tabernacle, and we see in other scriptures, I didn't look this one up, but this was given to Moses as a pattern of heavenly, a heavenly pattern that he was to re create the throne of Yahuwah and and his glory and his presence and this is what I you know when when this is stolen away from our understanding we see how critical it was for Hasatan the devil to to lie about the creation and and steal this understanding away from us and it it kind of makes us lose a little bit of the appreciation and understanding of Yahusha coming and at Sukkah, being born in a Sukkah, at the festival, that this all represents him making his tabernacle in our same tabernacle, which is a dome, tent, circular earth. Praise Yah. So, um, so there's, that was just kind of short. I could have gone way more in depth about the pillars and the foundations and all these things scripture talks about, but I don't want to get too far into that because we got to get to this baptismal, this mikvah immersion. And um, so, yeah, the, I got through all that, praise Yah. The next section of scriptures is going to be about Yahusha's name and being baptized into his name. We're going to start looking at some baptismal scriptures and and praise Yah, we get to go over into the New Testament for a moment here. Um, oh, you know what? At this moment, actually, before I get to the baptismal, I wanted to just read about the last great day and what the last great day is about. And in Israel, they celebrated the latter rain, the latter outpouring. That's why this is such a beautiful day to experience the outpouring of the Spirit and with baptism. Um, so, yeah, I'll go ahead and read that. Deuteronomy 11. It's all throughout Torah, really. But Deuteronomy 11:14 says that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain that you may gather in your grain and your wine and your oil. So we see in Torah about how the latter rain and that last outpouring and that final harvest was such a huge concept in the fall when you'd really have, you'd expect a great harvest. Um, but on the last great day, I think all of us know by now what Yahusha said in John 7, 37. It says, Yeshua proclaims the prophetic fulfillment of the latter rain outpouring of the Spirit. And I'm reading, of course, from the Chronological Gospels by Michael Rood. It says, In the last great day of the feast, which is today, Yahusha stood up and cried out, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. But this he spoke of the Spirit, which those who believe in him should receive. For the Ruach Kodesh was not yet given, but because Yahusha was not yet glorified, Many of the people who heard him speak said, Truth, this is the prophet. Uh, that's Deuteronomy 18 in Torah, the prophet. Others said, This is the Messiah. But some said, Shall Messiah come out of Galilee? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah comes from the seed of David? There's that. We started out, Amos 9, 11, the tabernacle, the sukkah of David. He came from David, of the seed of David, out of David's hometown of Bethlehem. So there was a division among the people. 
And actually, just previously, in John 7, 28, Yahusha says, I am the sent one. And there was a practice that they would do at the pool of Shalom, and they would bring up water uh, into the temple and pour it out to kind of pray for the latter rain outpouring, literal, but not the spirit, which Yahusha says, I am the latter rain. I am the, the living water. So we see in 728, then Yahusha cried out in the temple as he taught, you both know me and you know from whence I came. I did not send myself, but the truth is you do not know the one who sent me. I know him for I came from him and he has sent me. And that word, the sent one is shalom in Hebrew, shalom. The pool of shalom is what they would dip out of and it means sent one. And so Yahusha is prophetically fulfilling being the sent one. Um, and I'll just read... I'll just go ahead and read the footnote here. Yahusha is making a direct reference to the water libation ceremony that took place during the Feast of Sukkot. The priests would parade down to the Pool of Shalom, or Sent One, and bring up water onto the Temple Mount for the evening ceremony. At the end of the week, Yahusha will proclaim to be the fulfillment of this holy rehearsal put in place by the prophet King David. Yahusha will prophesy that he will be the source of the outpouring of the spirit of which Joel prophesies. Yahusha also interprets the prophetic significance of the fall feasts of Yahuwah and cryptically states that the latter rain outpouring will transpire on the last great day. He, the sent one, will fill his obedient followers with that living water after he goes to where they cannot follow. Ascends up above. So, and one more footnote. Uh, I want to read his other footnote about John 7.30. Eight. This incident is prophetically tied into the water libation ceremony on the Temple Mount that concluded on the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles. The prayer for rain was recited in the temple on the eighth day. Shemeni Azaret, Assembly of the Eighth. That's what we're on. We're on this last great eighth day. Also the circumcised the eighth day, Yahusha. Yahusha was prophetically proclaiming the future reality of the latter rain or double portion outpouring of the Holy Spirit that will transpire during the future fulfillment of the fall feasts of Yahuwah. Verse 39 is a scribal note that explains the significance and timing of the outpouring of the gift of the Holy Spirit, but the notation lacked the full detail that the early rain would transpire as a fulfillment of the spring feasts of Yahuwah on Shavuot, and that this prophetic statement by Yahusha is declaring the final fulfillment of the double portion latter rain outpouring on the last great day at the conclusion of the feast of Sukkot. And... He continues to talk about the, he mentions the 144,000 that he um, believes that that it will be outpoured upon 144,000 at the, the last days, which I do believe we are definitely in. And, and it's coming soon, guys. It's coming soon. So from there, now we are to baptism. And this is for... Amanda, and we're going to get in the mindset and understanding of baptism here. Um, Mark 16, 16, and you know, the, being, being immersed, baptized, is so interconnected with being saved. It's almost inseparable. Not that I would say if you didn't get water baptized, um, you couldn't go to heaven, but we're going to see 
Mark 16, 16, he that believes and is immersed shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. That's Mark 16, 16. Um, so we see he that believes and is baptized, and, and really it's, it's always really referring to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but we're going to see when the apostles started doing this baptism, we're going to see exactly uh, the process of how it went. Let's look at another one in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. We're getting close now. We're getting close to your mikvah baptism. Where are you, 1 Corinthians? There we go, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Through 11, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit at the kingdom of Yahuwah? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor breakers of wedlock, nor sodomites, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit at the kingdom of Yahuwah. And such were some of you, but ye are washed." But ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of Adonai, Yahusha HaMashiach, and by the Ruach, Yahuwah. So here we see you are washed in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. And we're, we're going to talk about how important it is to be baptized in Yahusha's name, um, particularly not only because he's the Messiah, the son of Elohim, but that when you utter Yahusha in Hebrew, you were saying, Yahuwah saves. That's what you were uttering when you literally said his name. Um, so let's look at a couple more. We'll, we'll see the uttering of his name in just a minute. And that meaning. Um, 1 Peter 3. 21, the like figure whereunto even immersion does also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward Yahuwah by the resurrection of Yahusha HaMashiach. So here we see it's, it's not washing off dirt off your body. It's actually being washed. And he always uses the word immersed because the connotations of baptism can maybe pe people think, well, you can just be sprinkled when you're a baby, but it's really immersion. And we're going to see that this is connected here. He says it's connected with the resurrection of Yahusha HaMashiach. So as you're immersed and you go under, that represents being buried and fully immersed in burial and then resurrected out. Um, Luke 24, 46 to 47. Is the next one. Who are we baptized in the name of? And what are we trying to picture? Luke 24, 46 and 47, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Hamashiach to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and the repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Yerushalayim. And ye are witnesses of these things. So uh, that re repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, Yahusha's name, among all nations, starting in Yerushalayim. So we're going to see here the pattern. We're going to be looking at the pattern a little bit of what the early apostles were doing. And it really does help our understanding. But additionally, Matthew 28, 19 says... 
Go ye therefore and teach all nations, immersing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Ruach HaKodesh, teaching them to guard all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So here we see the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as we've come to understanding now that that probably was not part of the original, it's not in the earlier manuscripts, that phrase that's kind of real popular in Catholicism to say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, which none of those are names. So we're going to Whereas a lot of people just prefer that because of tradition, but we're going to see what name really was it that the apostles used. And, um, and here's where we're going to see how the name and uttering the name is going to be very important to use Messiah's name. John 5.43 says, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. He says that he's come in the Father's name. So um, when we call his name, we'll, we're going to see this next one, Matthew one twenty one. When we call upon his name, we are uttering the words, Yah saves, Yahuwah saves. That's what we utter originally in the Hebrew tongue and that comes from Matthew 121 at when he was given his name by Mary and 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 Joseph says and she shall bring forth a son and you shall call his name Yahusha for he shall save his people from their sins and we see this name meaning Yah saves or he will save his people that direct connection in the original Hebrew is where that makes sense. It doesn't make sense really in English. I'll call his name Jesus because his name because he will save his people. It, it it just doesn't connect the same way as it did in the original Hebrew, which is why we love to use the Hebrew names. Now we're gonna see in now in John 14, 26, we're going to see something else about what would happen, the outpouring that we just talked about um, of the Spirit, John 14, 26. But the Comforter, this is Yahusha speaking, but the Comforter, which is the Ruach HaKodesh, which the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Father will, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kodesh, will be sent in Yahusha's name and in the baptism and receiving of the, the Holy Spirit in Yahusha's name. We're going to start seeing how that's what the apostles believed in. And the and we got to go to the book of Acts, guys, because Acts is the Acts of the Apostles, and it is where they began, really, their ministry after Yahusha ascends at the beginning of the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 4, verse 10, Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Yasharel, this is Peter speaking, that by the name of Yahusha HaMashiach of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom Yah raised from the dead, even by him does the man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there Yeshua, salvation, and any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So that name of Messiah, Yahusha of Nazareth, um, it, and Yeshua is the Hebrew word for salvation, is Yeshua. Um, so by his name, and how important is his name? Praise Yahusha. We, 
we say, we say, Yahuwah saves when we utter his name. That's what we're proclaiming is Yahuwah saves. And so the first Acts in Acts 2, 36 to 39, we're going to see the baptisms of the house of Israel, where they, the day of Pentecost, Shavuot in Jerusalem, Acts 2, 36. Therefore, let all the house of Yasharel know assuredly that Yahuwah has made that same Yahusha whom ye have crucified, both Yahuwah and Mashiach, he says, and it's both Lord and Christ in the English. He changes some things, I understand, but now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Kepha, that's Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Kepha said unto them, Repent and be immersed, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. Um, so there we see, in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach, is what we see that they were baptizing in Messiah's literal name, not just the name of the Father, name of the Son, not name of the Holy Spirit, although I believe we can think of his name encompassing all those concepts of of the Godhead, the Yahhead, for lack of a better word, because it means Yahuwah saves. Um, the next one, we're going to see some Samaritans be baptized by the apostles in Acts 8, 14 to 17. Now, when the apostles which were at Yerushalayim heard that Shamaron, Samaritans, had received the word of Yahuwah, they sent unto them Kepha and Yahukanan, that's Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Ruach HaKodesh, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were immersed in the name of Adonai Yahusha, the name of Yahusha. Um, then they laid their hands on them and they received the Ruach HaKodesh. They received the Holy Spirit being immersed in the name of Yahusha. That's Samaritans. Next, we go to the Gentile peoples in Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Kepha yet spoke these words, the Ruach HaKodesh fell on all them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Kepha, because that on the other nations, the Gentiles, other nations, also was poured out the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify Yah. Then answered Kepha, Can any man forbid water that these should not be immersed, which have received the Ruach HaKodesh as well as we? And he commanded them to be immersed in the name of Adonai Yahusha HaMashiach. So there we see, again, they were baptizing the early disciples in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. Um, and they actually received the Ruach HaKodesh before they even were immersed in this particular occasion. So it shows how water baptism is symbolic of what takes place to us in the spirit realm as we follow Yahusha. Uh, Acts 10, we did that, the Gentiles, Acts 19, 1 through 6, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Ruach HaKodesh since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Ruach HaKodesh. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye immersed? And they said, Unto John's immersion, John's baptism. Then said Paul, Yahukanan John, truly immersed with the immersion of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. 
That is on Mashiach, the Ahusha. When they heard this, they were immersed in the name of Adonai, Yahusha. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Ruach HaKodesh came on them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about 12 men baptized in the name of Yahusha. Man, praise Yahuwah for all this. It's just so wonderful to see these truths. Um, Romans 6, 3, and 4 is going to show us what being baptized like Yahusha, what, what does it mean? Um, know ye not that so many of us as were immersed into Yahusha HaMashiach were immersed into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him in immersion into death, that like as Mashiach was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So we're buried and immersed under the water, and we're resurrected unto new life when we become followers of Yahusha HaMashiach. That's what we put our faith in, is the resurrection at the last day that we will be resurrected if and and go to be with him if if we follow him we, that's the choice we have to make to follow him and that's what baptism is all about and um let's finish it up let's finish it up acts 22:16 and now why do you tarry arise and be immersed and wash away your sins calling on the name of the Lord, which here it says the Lord in the English, he translates it on the name of Yahuwah, but I think it would have been the name of Yahusha would have been what they would have originally said. Sometimes the, the stuff gets erased when it went from the original what they said and it was written down. So be baptized in the name of Adonai, which is again Yahusha. And then, this is it now, Colossians 2, Colossians 2, and one passage in Galatians, if I can find it, uh-oh, did I never mark the Colossians one? I did it. There it is, Colossians 2. 11 and 12, buried with him in immersion, wherein also ye are risen with him through belief in the operation of Elohim who has raised him from the dead. Um, whoops, I skipped, skipped verse 11. 11, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Messiah, buried with him in immersion and risen with him by faith in him and then one page over colossians 3 17 and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do all in the name of adonai yahusha giving thanks to yahuwah the father by him and here's the last one galatians 3 27 and says for as many of you as have been immersed or baptized into Mashiach, have put on Mashiach. So there we see it being baptized into Yahusha HaMashiach in his name. And that is the name in which the Ruach HaKodesh would be sent and delivered. So hopefully there's a few people to watch now and you won't be able to hear us i'm going to leave you right here i hope the connection has been acceptable this whole time um but we're gonna go head down are you ready mm -hmm. let's do this thing so yeah we're just gonna try and go right down there where everyone can see and I will baptize Amanda in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach and just ask her a question or two before we do that. Ready? Oh my God.
you in the name of the Father, the Yahusha HaMashiach, whoops, I said it wrong, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection, go and walk in newness of life, <laughs> hallelujah, praise Yah. <laughs> Yahusha HaMashiach. anything uh, uh -huh. <coughs> Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. The last great day, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kodesh, the Spirit of the Father, Yahuwah. Praise Yahusha. Ah! Woo! That wraps up our holy assembly. Looks like Sandy was here, Kendall was here at least two or three so i'm gonna end it right there guys praise y'all hope you could see everything <laughs>